Hello, good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is for you. My name is Brady and this is The Classroom and today we are turning this basic garage scene into a full-on concert. How? Well, stay tuned to find out. But if you are new here, new to The Classroom, new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button if you like what's going on, a like button if you're feeling super happy. And as for the entire video, the full video that we're referencing here, I'm gonna leave the link down below to Sarah's channel of the full video of the full uh, cover that she's doing. So go please check out Sarah's channel and give her some support as well. But let's dive into what we got going on here today. Now, I don't know about you, but for myself, I love getting as creative as possible with as little budget as possible and as few hands on set as possible. And that's exactly what we did here. All I knew is that I wanted some sort of concert feeling for Sarah singing in this video, but I only had as much as a garage to work with. So I asked myself, how do I do this? I mean, a garage is not flattering, it's ugly, it's tight quarters. What are my options here? And I knew that I wanted a backlight with fog cutting through in the background, making these artifacts and shafts of light. So I kind of based everything around that. So real quick, before we get into the lighting, let's go ahead and talk about the camera, camera choice, settings, so on and so forth. So the camera I used was a Blackmagic Pocket 4K with the Sigma 18 to 35 lens on that. And I had that all mounted on my DJI Ronin S gimbal. And as for my settings, the white balance was set to 5600 and the aperture was set all the way to F9 because I really wanted to have a forgiving depth of field since I was pulling focus on my own, I was on the gimbal. It was a lot going on. So F9, longer depth of field, a little bit more forgiving and not as uh, you know necessary to be tack focused or tack sharp all the time. Moving back to the lighting side of things, what we do know is that we wanna go for this backlit look. So that'll be a great starting point for our lighting. To get this back light, I used an Aperture 120D Mark II, and on that I had a Fresnel 2X attachment. Having a hard light source like with the Fresnel is gonna give you these sharp artifacts of light and this contrasty light cutting through the fog especially. So that's why I went with that. And I put the light on the floor pointed like 45 degrees up. So it's really casting these beams up into the air, kind of making this almost halo effect behind Sarah. And then to get this cool blue look, I just took a Roscoe color gel. I think it was like a daylight blue. And I just clipped that right to the front of the Fresnel, made sure it wasn't spilling anywhere else. And now we've got a really cool blue backlight. But of course, this video isn't about a cool silhouette. It's about Sarah and it's about the singer, it's about the artist, whether it's a music video you're shooting or a performance, whatever it is, you wanna light the performers or the talent. So we wanna bring in one more light, but immediately we run into an issue with having some sort of forward facing light. And the issue is the garage is very tight quarters. So you're gonna have a lot of light spill and you're gonna blow your cover that you're in a garage and you're not on stage somewhere. So we're gonna tackle this key light and lighting our subject while controlling our light and shaping our light source. Now what we're gonna call our key light or spotlight or whatever you wanna call it, I used an Aperture 300X and I brought that high into the side, kind of emulating one of those spotlights that you would see on stage. But with the reflector dish and just by itself as a reflector dish, you will get a lot of spill. It's gonna bounce around the room you're gonna blow your cover. So to really shape the light and control our lighting, I added on a honeycomb grid, which is gonna keep the light going pretty direct, pretty forward, it's like a 30 degree grid. And on top of that, I use barn doors. So the grid is gonna keep it controlled and pointing kind of straight down at Sarah, not around the garage. And then I use the barn doors as well, just to close off, kind of flag off the light as it was spilling just a little bit more and leaking into the rest of the set. So with those two lights in place, this looks phenomenal, but I wanted to add some spice to it. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I was thinking, I've got Sidus Link, I've got some Aperture MCs that I wanna play with. Why not try to time some stuff up, make some lights dynamic and come in at different times? And that's what we're gonna do here. But if you don't have Sidus Link or programmable lights like this, it's not make or break but it is really helpful to have something like Sidus Link to time lights to come in at different times. So that's what we're really gonna do here and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I was thinking about it and how I could place these lights in a cool way without blowing our cover and I thought it'd be awesome to have kind of a back wall of lights that would surge in periodically throughout the songs on impactful parts of the song. Now what I did with the MCs was evenly space them out two rows of six uh, top and bottom and I used a tape measure to measure them all out and I wanted to have them on the back wall and just so conveniently the garage door is metal and the MCs are magnetic. Super easy to just slap them all on in that order and we are good to go to dive into Sidus Link. Now one tip to make your programming of Sidus Link just a little bit easier if you're working with music videos or live performance or anything with a song or a track is to either 
time it to a metronome. So you've got the same exact pace each time, each take that you do it, and it's a lot easier to make those time codes. Or if you've already got a pre-recorded file, just time everything up to those time codes. That way, you're not like a little bit different timing each and every take, and then you're just ballparking when those lights are gonna come in. You know an exact time code, and it makes everything a lot easier. So once in the Sidus Link app, I brought in all the Aperture MCs, and then I went over into the Program tab, and I knew that I wanted all of them to come on at the same time. So I made a group with all 12 of the MCs in one group. And then I started to go in to those time codes that I wanted and start making the commands for when I'm gonna cue these lights on. And then to more further fine tune the adjustments, I went in and adjusted the fade in time, the hold time, how long it's gonna stay. And then the fade out time. And I had these lights set to just a pure white 5600 Kelvin because my camera was set to 5600 white balance. These are gonna be 5600 as well. That's gonna be clean white. Once you get the hang of it, Sidus Link makes everything really, really easy to set this up easily and quickly. So it really didn't take me long to do this. And it took longer to just plan out when I wanted these lights to come in. And again, if you don't have Sidus Link or something to program, there's still another way to get dynamic light. And that's what I did here with the key light. I wanted her to come in as a silhouette in the beginning of the video and then the light to come in, the key light to come in on her. But unfortunately, I'm sure there's a techie reasoning for this, why the 300X doesn't work in the program mode. Um, not sure about that. But unfortunately, since the 300X doesn't go into the program mode, I didn't know a way to have that light fade in when it was just Sarah and I and we didn't have any other hands on set. So a DIY hack that I did here is I took the 2.4 gigahertz typical remote and I gaff taped that to my Ronin. So when I was recording and when I was going through and I cued that light on and I knew when I wanted it to come in, I just hit the plus button, held it for it to come and fade in. Now it's not the absolute best option. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of skippiness and you can see that curve. I did play around with the log curves of how the light kind of, how the opacity went through the percentage range. But for the most part, it worked pretty darn well, especially being very low budget, and it made it even more fun and creative. So if you do not have any programmable fixtures, you can still get dynamic light with your remote in a way like this. But these are the three different elements that I added to this video. I mean, you've got the backlight, you've got the key light, and then you've got those practicals on the background. Now you don't necessarily need to exactly recreate this performance video. If you wanna go a different way with it and take elements from this, whether it's the backlight or the practical lights on the wall or just one spotlight or the dynamic lighting, take bits and pieces of it, create cool things on your own, and I'm honestly excited to see it. So if you guys do do anything like this, please tag me. Uh, I'll put everything down below, hashtag Brady's Classroom send it to me, DM it to me. I love seeing this. I love seeing your guys' work. But that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you found this video interesting, educational, entertaining, resourceful, whatever adjective best suits you. But please go check out Sarah's channel and check out this full video. I'm gonna put everything down below in the description. And we are creeping up on 75,000 of you, mind boggling as it is. But I was thinking maybe if you guys help me get there, I'll help and give some thing back or some things back. I don't know. Well, I do know, but I'm not going to tell you yet because that ruins the surprise. And now I'm rambling. So I'm going to finish this and you guys are going to go back to your next class or whatever you got going on. Anyway, cheers. Take care. Have a great day. Class dismissed.